Hey, hi, hello, and good afternoon. My name is Amanda, and welcome to Harmony Portal Tarot. For today's Pick a Card reading, we are going to be getting some messages, some advice, some guidance from your inner self. This is also maybe known as the higher self. I just personally call it the inner self because it feels more a part of me than a more external feeling higher self. So if you're new to pick a card readings, I just ask that you close your eyes, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to center your energy and focus in on pile number one with the pyrite, pile number two with the yellow calcite, and pile number three with the amethyst. If more than one pile calls out to you, there may be multiple messages in each pile for you. Once you've selected your pile or piles, you can go ahead and check the description box below for the timestamps, and I also pin them as a top comment. But please remember, these are general readings, so only take the information that resonates with you, your life, your situation, and just go ahead and leave the rest behind. Without delaying this any further, I'm going to give you a moment to meditate on your cards, and I will see you over at your reading. Hello, group number one. You selected the beautiful pyrite, which we will set up here out of our way a little bit. Uh, you have the creativity card. So this is very exciting. The advice coming from your inner self, your higher self, whichever you want to label that energy, it is that fractal of the original source creator, your spirit. That is what we're getting this information from today. But with this creativity card, this is letting me know that you guys really are finding creative ways forward, creative solutions, maybe even diving into, or the advice is to start diving into something creative to really get the creative juices flowing in your life so that you can feel like more of a creator being rather than someone who's just going through the motions of life. So you're really creating maybe even for some of you, a new way forward that just looks a lot different than the life or the path that you're currently living. So let's go ahead and get some additional guidance from the tarot. Anything group one needs to know. Advice, wisdom, guidance from their inner self. Ooh, here we go. Let's get one more tarot card. So we have here temperance. Yes. So it's about finding the balance. Again, like we were saying, maybe even finding a new way forward with the way that you live your day to day life, day to day routine. We also have the six of pentacles, more balance energy. So I think that is just such a theme for you guys is just to find more balance in bringing more creativity to the surface. Even those of you that lead a very creative life already, this is just finding ways to incorporate that creativity even further into your day-to-day -day routines and just the way that you show up for yourself, the way that you show up for others. Maybe even finding creative ways to save money or to be able to manifest the things that you desire as well. All right, let's get some additional guidance from Group One's inner self. Anything else they need to know? Advice, wisdom, guidance. Ooh, we have wedding. So there might be a wedding coming in for someone or finding out just exactly how are we going to pay for this wedding. Those of you that are getting married and wanting to have a decent wedding, but just kind of unsure exactly how to go about, you know, saving money or uh, what money to spend on this wedding. For those of you that this doesn't resonate with, this is just a bringing together of one force of energy with another and finding the best way forward, possibly financially to, you know, get that dream home. Very, very uh, four of wands energy here as well uh, to, you know, find these really deep connections, to feel inspired, to feel passionate, maybe even making changes around the home. That has been such a theme on my channel lately. Um, maybe even buying yourself a piece of jewelry that just represents this new creative path that you're on. Or sometimes I will wear a ring on my middle finger and I will sometimes program myself to um, have that ring be a reminder of something. So that could be something you do to remind yourself to give gratitude or, hey, before I spend this money, look at this ring and whatever it represents, maybe instead of spending the money on this thing, I'm saving it for a rainy day or I'm saving it for this bigger purchase. You know, it could be literally anything you are wearing this piece of jewelry to remind yourself of whatever it is you want to remind yourself of. So let's get some additional guidance. Okay. Anything else? Group one's inner self wants them to know. Ooh, we have your, yes, surround yourself with your soul tribe. That's exactly what we were kind of talking about with this uh, connection energy here. Very three of cups vibe here as well. Um, just very beautiful about finding the balance, especially those of you that spend a lot of time with maybe coworkers or family or just people day to day that you're, you'd rather just not be around. 
balance that time and energy out with actually being very intentional about the people you spend time with on your downtime. So say you have some toxic coworkers, you can't really change that scenario, but when you're home, you can choose to reach out or hang out with the people that really feel connected to you on a deeper level, that bring you happiness and abundance rather than, you know, toxicity. And we also have here, celebrate yourself, you deserve it. And I think also with this kind of, uh, philanthropy energy here we have in the six of pentacles this could just be letting those of you know that really have a hard time spending money on yourself that it's okay it's okay to once in a while splurge on yourself or to save for that thing that really will enhance your life i'm not saying that this thing is going to you know bring you ultimate happiness you'll be happy forever after but at the very least this thing you might be saving for could just make your day-to-day -day life easier. It could be like, you know, for my example, I'm really wanting to save for a new camera on this channel so I don't get that right speed error that this camera, now that it's, uh, you know, five, six years old, I think at this point, being able to buy a new camera, yeah, it won't, you know, change my life forever and make every day happy, but at the very least, it will improve the quality of my content because I won't have to be constantly, you know, looking up and being worried that the camera's not recording. That's just one prime example as to how you are, you know, maybe purchasing something that's gonna enhance your life in some way. All right, advice, wisdom, guidance from group one's inner self, what they need to know right now, just anything coming out. Okay, we have the dragonfly, so be lighthearted. Uh, you might be finding out some news that's very exciting news. For some of you, that could be getting engaged to or, you know, learning that someone you love very close to is getting married. Um, this could also be things coming to light, things that were once hidden are now, you know, coming to light, making those necessary changes, doing the healing work, doing that inner work, doing the self-love, self-care thing, and being able to make those necessary changes, especially with the creative solutions to move forward, to make your life really shine, um, and putting your own very personal and authentic spin on your life as well. And then, oh my goodness, stop it! <laughs> You guys watched me shuffle. You could see the magic at play here. But yes, wedding. We've got a ring here. And then we were talking about, you know, taking this ring and, uh, you know, having a very specific intention. But for those of you that aren't getting engaged or you're already married and happily just living your dream, um, again, this could be a token of jewelry, specifically a ring for, for most of you. Because I think that's something, a lot of times when I wear necklaces, I don't really remember I have it. But, you know, I look at my hands a lot, especially when I'm working and stuff. So a ring is a very telling uh, reminder for me to get with it, uh, whatever it is I'm programming that intention with. But yes, engagement, partnership, commitment, eternity, completion, union, um, just being able to take that next level either in your career, in a relationship. For some of you, it is a relationship and not even a romantic relationship for some of you, but, you know, connecting with that soul tribe, you know, letting a soul brother or soul sister know, hey, I'm thinking of you. I love you. I want you in my life. You know, let's go hang out. Let's have a good time. Um, could be indicated here and the temperance energy really is I used to associate it with spirit guide energy But since I no longer connect with any ascended masters archangels or spirit guides myself Although you can if that's your prerogative um, I really just assimilate this temperance energy with my inner self aka the higher self that part of me that is directly connected to the original source creator so just tuning deeper into that aspect of you that is outside of this matrix could really open up a whole new world for you guys. And now I'm hearing the song from Aladdin, A Whole New World. So maybe in their lyrics there, that song, there's a very important message for you, or that's just a reminder. That song has a special place in your heart for some of you, maybe not for all of you. Uh, but for those of you that are like, yeah, I don't even remember that song. Maybe just go look it up, listen to it, and just see if it sparks anything intuitively for you. Yeah, uh, so that is your message group one. I hope it resonated. Please feel free to let me know below any thoughts you had about the reading, any stories you wanna share, and even any little like or comment, little emoji, whatever you wanna leave on the video um, as that sort of energy exchange. I would greatly appreciate it. That would help me out in the algorithm so much. And um, just that would let me know that you guys appreciated this reading as much as I appreciate you coming to see the reading. So thanks again so much for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and your donations. Uh, the donations also help really keep this channel going and can help me get that camera much quicker. So thank you so much for that, and I hope to see you right back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, you guys, bye. Hello, group number two. You selected the yellow calcite. This does resonate with that solar plexus chakra. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you might know that the chakras to me actually represent the kind of 3D or matrix construct of our healing 
energies that have been separated out in not just seven chakras, but multiple chakras, over a hundred that I can just kind of vet out with my muscle testing and my own intuition. There are a lot of chakra points that we just don't even hear of, but um, really technically our original blueprint is to have three original chakra points and you can look them up through like ancient Chinese medicine. They call them like the Danshin points. That's more the energy that I personally tune into, but there is just letting you know there might be an imbalance or a healing that's needing to take place in the more central, the more solar plexus area for those of you that do want to do that chakra work. But with this healing card, yes, this is uh, like three arrows here. Remind me of the three of swords. And there's a teeny bit of blood dripping from his mouth and he's got a broken wing that looks like it's on the mend. So those of you that have been going through a rough time, this is letting me know per your inner self that you are healing this trauma, this toxicity. Those of you struggling with some sort of ailment or um, injury or illness, you are overcoming this with really deep knowing your inner self is coming forward to really help you uh, be able to clear the slate on whatever it is you've been going through. So let's get some tarot. Uh, let's get some additional advice, messages, guidance, wisdom from your inner self. And that inner self, if I haven't explained it already, is just basically the higher self that the New Age movement would subscribe to. But to me, the higher self sometimes almost feels like it's out of reach or it's above me in some way. And so I ascribe that uh, label of the inner self to that part of me that is directly connected to the original source creator that is outside of this, you know, 3D construct, 3D matrix, and to get to the direct link to God, the universe, whatever you want to label that energy. Okay, so that's where we're getting our guidance from, your inner self that's directly connected. So what do we have here? So we have the... Eight of Swords, yes, this is exactly what we were talking about earlier, and the Wheel of Fortune. So yes, you guys really are closing out those cycles where you felt victimized with the trauma and the wounds. I mean, this person's arms aren't even bound. They're not even bound. They're blindfolded and they're in this, you know, kind of cage-like shape with the swords around it, but there are even some steps. There's a star illuminating the path ahead, and it's just a matter of healing or overcoming some sort of limiting belief to be able to turn over a new leaf or start a new cycle. So it's going to start within, coming from that inner self, to come up and then start to be realized or thought about in your thought process, in your mental capacity, to be able to finally heal. And a lot of times our belief systems um, are like the last things to get on board or the last things to heal, um, right along with the physical body as well. But a lot of times it's spiritual first, then emotional, then mental, then physical. It's kind of the order of operations with the healing journey. So you're starting in a deeper place. And for those of you who have no idea where to start on your healing journey, just going within, just tuning in. Uh, you don't even have to put on any kind of music or meditation, but just setting the intention to connect to your inner self. And even if nothing happens, just know that something is happening. And the more you practice this, the more you're gonna start to feel that essence of you come more to the surface rather than be so buried deep. And some of you might even have issues or trouble trusting your intuition with that calcite here. Um, just trusting your gut, so to speak, that does resonate with that area of the gut, the intuition, the confidence, the self-esteem. And this person literally is like a star on a stage and they have no idea because there could be like a whole crowd of people out here um, and they have no idea. Like they have something to say, they have something to give out to the world and the world is most likely receiving some of it, but you just don't feel you're worthy of giving this energy or this information or whatever it is. But your inner self is coming forward at this time to let you know, no, now is the time. Now is the time to speak your truth and really shine your light because the world needs what it is you want to offer. All right, so what else? does group two's inner self have for them? We have fighting, yes, and again, so many of you have been on this wheel, almost just constant, incessant, like healing path, healing journey, maybe even perpetual dark night of the soul, and you're done fighting. You're just, you want things to be easier. You don't understand why life has to be such a struggle. And a lot of times, <laughs> you know, I know we don't want to hear it, but a lot of times we create a lot of our own struggle by doubling down and uh, basically wearing that role of victim. I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but a lot of humanity wears that role of victim very well. And yes, we may have been victimized, but that doesn't mean uh, that we are, you know, forever and lifetime and lifetime and lifetime after lifetime, a victim. Yes, maybe we had been victimized in the past, but we do not have to keep carrying that victim mentality or, um, you know, just 
being the perpetual victim. And even martyr energy is coming up, so you might be closing out cycles where you feel you have to save other people or sacrifice yourself to make others happy. You're just done with all that crap, and that is such good news, such good news. And your inner self is coming to the surface to let you know, hey, it's time to let go of these victim programs, these victim mentalities, and not even just you, but you may be noticing this in other people around you and, you know, your inner self is just saying, let's maybe not spend so much time with those people or indulge them or when they're gossiping about other people or, you know, woe is me, you know, just the same crap, different day <laughs> with their energy. Instead of entertaining it and sympathizing with them, you're kind of pulling your energy back. And it's not because they don't matter to you or you don't care. You do. But sometimes when we enable people to continue being this kind of victim, it doesn't serve them. So you're maybe stepping away from certain people like that in your life, even if just temporarily, so that you can figure out, you know, where do I go from here? I want to change this connection or shift this connection, close out those cycles in this maybe toxic patterning within this connection. For some of you, that could be a family member that you don't want to cut this person out of your life. But at the same time, you don't want to continue to, you know, it's almost like <laughs> I keep bringing this example up in some of my recent pick cards, but almost like Groundhog Day, like same crap, different day, like this person never evolves, they never change, they always have the same complaints about the same people, about the same situations, and it just never gets better. And you being there and kind of being their soundboard or, I won't say punching bag, but almost sometimes feels to you when you're done hanging out with this person that it's just so draining. And for some of you, it's not even a person, it's a job, it's a location you go, it's um, maybe even just some entity interference in your own aura and you're just sick of it and you're done with it. And you can set intentions any time to let go or release or um, off burden yourself or unload yourself of any entity interference but it's going to take some inner work to get to the root cause of any entity because um, entities will attach to places where we've had trauma and injury both etheric mental emotional physical all of the things um, so when you can get to the root cause of certain issues you can really help clear out that entity interference and don't think that you may not have entities everybody on this realm has entity interference in almost every area of life. So I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but once you start realizing that a lot of even your own thought process isn't you, you're more the observer of the thoughts, not the thoughts or the person or the thing thinking the thoughts. That's when you can start to get a handle on a lot of this victimhood and, you know, kind of cyclical mentality that keeps you stuck in negative thinking. It's not even you. It's that entity interference. And sometimes when you can look at it that way and just have a kind of detached approach to the next time these thoughts come up or these patterns come up, um, it just makes it easier not to become triggered or just jump into that thought like, yeah, this is my truth. It really isn't. Okay, what else? We have turn lemons into lessons. That's exactly what we were just talking about pretty much is, um, yeah, and, and knowing Better and doing better is kind of another theme coming through. And even the combination of pink and yellow here is bringing me a lot of happiness right now. And now I have chills on my crown. So maybe even wearing yellow and pink together. And I know I'm somebody, <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing literally a pink shirt right now. I don't know if you can see. There, it's kind of like a dusty rose kind of pink. Uh, it appears a little darker on camera, but I don't normally wear a lot of color in my wardrobe. I'm just kind of a fan of wearing black a lot. And, you know, just because I have a black dog and, you know, just the dog hair situation and just... Um, it feels comfortable, you know, all of that. Um, but I've been challenging myself lately just to wear more color. So even those of you that love to wear a lot of black and stuff, you know, don't beat yourself up or think you're doing something wrong because you are. But just once in a while, bring or add a pop of color to your life, especially yellows and pinks and more vibrant, cheery colors um, will really help lighten the load or, you know, bring your mood up. And we also have nourish your body with high vibing energy. So maybe some of this mental toxicity and possible brain fog, this could even be brain fog, confusion, walking into a room, forgetting why you came into the room. Um, a lot of this can be caused by eating a lot of processed foods or just foods that are just not good for us. And even a lot of the things that are deemed healthy aren't even good for us. And so that's where your own intuition comes in because you can go online and search pretty much any food and you will get completely opposite accounts of this is very healthy for you this is very damaging to you and everything in between so really it comes down to you doing some trial and error testing you know does this feel good when i drink this juice does this feel good when i eat that meat does it feel good when i eat that vegetable you know whatever it is uh when i eat these twinkies and these processed foods like is it is it good for me does that do i feel good do i feel lethargic do i feel you know some really weird digestional or digestive things digestional that's not a word <laughs> 
<laughs> intestinal digestive. I think I just combined it into a digestinal. Though, so there we go. <laughs> you learned a new word today. So did I. Uh, but yeah, this is about examining things and not just settling for things or accepting things because that's just what you've been taught or what you've been told. Really do some investigation within yourself to see, is this true for me? It might not be. It might not be. All right. Additional guidance for group two from their inner self. Words of wisdom, guidance, advice. We have here kisses. Unconditional loving energy coming in hot. And yes, giving and receiving. It's a very six of pentacles energy, which we also did get in group one. Um, but yeah, giving and receiving of your affection. Showing your vulnerability. Showing your softer side. It's a very feminine energy coming here. And falling in love with your life. Not just people in your life, but your life itself. The things you do. Uh... The places you go, the people you see, just falling in love once again and almost seeing things uh, from a very childlike perspective could really help this as well. And that will really help you get through this fighting energy that's been going on in your life for so long for some of you. And then we have here clock. So needs time, uh, takes time, in time, cycles, time to heal. Yes, time to heal. Time's up for some of you, and not in a bad way, but you've, you've learned certain lessons and you can let go of the baggage of the past now. You don't have to keep carrying it around. I always call it the backpack full of bricks. You don't have to continue to carry it because so many of the lessons that you wanted to learn, remember, turning turn lemons into lessons, yes, those lessons, or as I like to call the obstacles in my life, opportunities for growth, once you learn the lesson, you don't have to keep carrying the baggage of it. You can carry the essence of the lesson without all the past yuck that comes along with it. And this is about progress. So making progress on your healing journey. From now on, you're instead of having this fighting attitude, like I'm going to fight my demons and I'm going to overcome and conquer. This is a more go with the flow, more feminine energy of receiving the healing you need from your inner self. That universal energy of love uh, and healing from the original source creator that comes in to help and assist and heal utilizing that energy to kind of ride the wave of it rather than try to force against something that's not in alignment with that energy. So that is your message group two. I hope this resonated. Please feel free to let me know below what you thought. Any stories you want to share? Every little like, comment, even a little emoji or something down in the comments really does help with the engagement on my channel and really does help with the energy exchange that we have done here today. So I would greatly appreciate that. For those of you that do that type of stuff, I really do greatly appreciate you and thank you so much. And to those of you that have been sending the donations, thanks again so much. We are saving for a new camera so we don't keep getting that weird little right speed error that I get once in a while that just completely shuts off my camera and I'm just blabbering on and on and you don't see my movements anymore. Thankfully, my mic is very trusty and gets all my words on on film or on, uh, you know, the, the memory card. But my camera a lot of times will just stop recording and I don't tend to look up a lot. <laughs> but when I do, a lot of times I'm like, oh no, it stopped recording. And when? I have no idea. Uh, but yes, thanks again, you guys, so much for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and your donations and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you, group two, right back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, you guys, bye. Hello, group number three. So this is going to be a reading from your inner self, advice, guidance, wisdom, just whatever needs to come through from your inner self. And just to clarify what the inner self is, it is that part of you, your spirit, not even your soul. The soul is also, like the ego, a matrix construct, something we utilize in the material world to uh, kind of keep the tab from lifetime to lifetime. But the spirit is that true, pure, untainted essence of us, that fractal of source, that is directly connected to the original source creator outside of any construct or matrix, false or otherwise. It is just the pure untainted energy of who we are. And that is where we are getting our information today from that piece of you that is directly connected to that source. So yes, you have selected here the beautiful, the magical, the mystical amethyst. And I love amethyst so much. It's I call it the gateway crystal because it's the pretty crystal that most people I talk to, maybe not everybody, but most people I talk to, it's the crystal that first attracted their eye and then got them interested in other crystals. And that was definitely, for me, the gateway crystal. But you have the card here, Toxic, and I love that it came out because I always put the crystals out first and then I deal the cards and then off to the races we go. Um, but you know, a lot of times amethyst can help with uh, detoxing, it can help with addictions and overcoming addictions. It can also help your connection to your inner self. So win-win. And this is letting me know you guys are going to be able to overcome 
toxic cycles, toxic loops, addictions, habits, anything you're looking to clear out of your life that's not in alignment with your truest, most authentic, most pure and organic self, you're, you're kicking it to the curb, or at the very least, you're trying to get it out of your life, which a lot of times just setting those intentions and putting that effort in is like nine tenths of what you need to do to really start things changing and manifesting and shape shifting in your life to experience a better life for yourself. So let's see some additional guidance, wisdom, advice from your inner self for group three. Ooh, we have here the nine of wands. Yes, and I love to see it with this toxic card because it's letting you know that cycle's about to close out. You're getting this renewed and rejuvenated sense of purpose and passion toward whatever it is you're trying to close out of your life so that you can have this bright and beautiful new beginning to come in. And Queen of Cups, yes, this is letting you know you are utilizing your intuition and that inner self as like that mirror for yourself as that guidance. So sometimes, um, this, this can sometimes be a scary practice, uh, but just looking into a mirror, any mirror, it could be a you know mirror on your car, it could be a mirror on your little compact or on the wall, whatever, mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> That's a Mandela effect, by the way. But yes, looking into a mirror, looking into your eyes and setting the intention to connect to your inner self which is your spirit, which is directly connected to that original source creator to get any guidance, wisdom, intuitive hits, and just looking, you know, blinking here and there, but just almost like the rest of your face just starts to morph and change shape, which can be scary for some people. That's why I say only do this if it resonates. But sometimes you can get some crystal clear messages from your spirit directly from the original source creator by doing this, but setting intentions that you are not connecting to any dark or false entities, only the pure and untainted organic energy that runs through your body. That is what you're connecting to. Um, because yeah, this can be scary if you're not setting proper intentions. So do the proper, you know, protocol for you. Just use your intuition, whatever feels best. And you will get a lot of insight, a lot of downloads and guidance. Even if it doesn't come during that, like, you know, mirror gazing or eye gazing practice, it will come to you or maybe even be downloaded in your dream state. Um, and as I was setting, you know, your card up and taking the other cards away from pile two, I just got this major intuitive hit that your dream state is going to have some very telling information coming forward for you over the next month or so. So try to pay very close attention to your dreams. And for those of you that don't remember your dreams or you wake up and you're like, shoot, I know I had a dream, but I cannot remember what it was. Don't worry about it. You the timing will line up to where that information that came through in the dream state will be there and available. But for those of you that do remember your dreams, it's almost like you have some extra and additional homework because every little detail, every thought, feeling, emotion, uh, you know, color, they all tell a story. And the more detailed you can get with your dream analysis, even if it's just on the notes app on your phone, um, the more insight you can write down. And then even looking back on it, you know, weeks later, months later, years later, you can still get those intuitive hits or downloads of what that means for you. Even if you don't understand it on a conscious level, subconsciously things are coming through and sticking that will assist you on the road ahead. All right. What other messages, advice, wisdom, and guidance does group three's inner self have for them? Ooh, we have bugs. So very interesting. We're using a dream interpretation deck. So this can be very interesting. You might be getting a lot of signs, symbols, and synchronicities coming to you through bugs. Any bug, especially that you find in your house. And I know in the wintertime, it's kind of hard to find a bug in your house. Um, for some people, that's very good news. For other people, they're like, oh, my little spirit creatures aren't around. Um, but the other day I saw a box elder bug and it's not uncommon in the Northern hemisphere here for us to find, you know, bugs that are kind of hibernating in our house in the winter. Um, but I found a box elder bug the other day and they have such a beautiful spiritual meaning. Um, so if you find a bee or a bug or, you know, a, a dead bug, a live bug, um, spiders are another pretty common one, but this to me is more like true bugs, not arachnids, but you know, insect. I know arachnids are part of the insect family or whatever, but, um, Specifically, if it were for spiders, you would probably see that more um, just as its own message. But spiders really do represent creativity. So there might even be a message for you guys in group one, which had the creativity message. Uh, but yeah, be on the lookout for bugs or um, maybe even just while we've been talking, if there's been any bugs that kind of came into your awareness or your mind's eye, looking up the meaning of those bugs, because those could be the message that are trying to come through for you with this bugs message as well. All right. Any additional guidance, wisdom advice coming in from group three's inner self? I 
I just was thinking um, as I'm shuffling here, well, not like I was thinking it, but it just popped into my awareness. Uh, last night we went to a Lady Grizz basketball game. It's the um, Lady Basketball of the university that's here in my town, uh, the college I went to. We went to the basketball game last night to watch my oldest son have his uh, band performance for his school. It was a big deal. They were so excited. Um, so there might be some sort of event or something, maybe even a game or, um, yeah, just like an event that you guys are going to that feels very exciting and very... Um, you know, just helping you have some fun, let your hair down, let loose a little bit. There might be something coming up that you're going to be able to do that. Yeah, ask for help. It doesn't make you weak. I love this because especially with this, it's like I just, I got to roll up my sleeves. I got to do all the work. I got to do it all myself. We don't have to do everything ourselves. And even in our own self-healing journey, we can rely and lean on others. We don't have to do it all alone. And I know that inner self is part of us. And sometimes it can feel like such an external part of us, even though it is literally the innermost part of us. But connecting to that part of you can almost help you feel like you have this ally, this you know superhero that's going to work for you day in and day out. But also asking the you know fellow humans in your life for help if you are struggling, if you need uh, you know someone in the house to pick up some extra chores so that you can you know get some relaxation in, or you know you have all this other work you're doing, um, just don't be afraid to ask for help. And we also have here, awaken your authentic self and be true to you. And how funny we were talking about the mirror. <laughs> and now we've got that message here. She's looking into the mirror. She's smiling at herself. And awaken your authentic self and be true to you. That's what this mirror practice will help you do is awaken that authentic or that inner self part of you that can help you stay in alignment with what your spirit wants. Not even what your soul contracts are or what your ego wants. Because those, again, are matrix constructs. We are getting out of the matrix and connecting directly to our spirit and what the spirit wants for this, you know, journey here on this planet. All right. I love that. So additional guidance for group three. Messages, wisdom, advice coming from their inner self. Anything else? Here it is. Okay. So we have here photography or photograph. Uh, and it's funny, it says photograph, but I literally read it as photography. So some of you might be taking pictures and maybe you're doing even some mirror selfies. I don't know. I don't know. You do your life. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, this to me feels like you um, just wanting to express yourself in photographs. But even looking at old photos, missing even old versions of yourself, the way you used to look when you were younger, or maybe even seeing for some of you how far you've come. Those of you that have been on some sort of wellness or weight loss journey, looking back at past photos, and now you can really see the changes reflected in your more current reality. Um, but yeah, this is also about not just the nostalgia of looking at old photos, but taking photos um, to make some new memories as well. And maybe that event that we were kind of channeling into um, before these cards came out, there's going to be something with event and event um, that you're going to want to take lots of pictures. And of course, I look up and notice our camera is no longer filming. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been blathering on without it filming, but again, this is one of the first purchases I'm making once we get a payment from YouTube, a new camera, and your donations are going to go to help with that. We also have here a girl with a snake. So yeah, uh, this is the empath narcissist paradigm coming out to play, um, but also, you know, clearing out the narcissistic tendencies, not just with the people in your life, but also, you know, even the empaths have, you know, it's really the narcissist empath coin. It's two sides of the same coin. So even your most beautiful empaths have narcissistic tendencies because this matrix is programmed from that narcissistic standpoint, that service to self standpoint. So even the most empathiest, uh, is that a word? No, probably not. The most empathiest of empaths has narcissistic traits at least somewhere in there. But here, being charmed or used, enable boundaries. Yeah, so this is about, uh, you know, even going back to this message, asking for help doesn't make you weak. But for those of you that help others all the time, but are afraid to ask for help, that lets you know there's an imbalance there. But also if there's someone in your life asking for you to, you know, step up and make all these changes and do things for them all the time, but they never are there to, you know, counterbalance that or do that for you when it's your time, um, it just might be time to set some really sacred boundaries with this person or, you know, just let them know, hey, I'm no longer available to do that for you. So you're going to find someone else to do it or do it yourself. <laughs> um, but also to me, um, the more positive message of a snake is healing and specifically the feminine energy because it's the girl with the snake. So the feminine energy, healing the feminine energy within your body, um, usually that's associated with the left side of your body. So any left side of your body ailments, she even has, if you 
yes, we're looking at it here face down or, you know, on the table. It looks like her right arm, but if it's her left arm that's in a sling. So it's almost like she's having to overutilize her masculine to make it in this world. But now's the time to allow that feminine energy to heal up a little bit so that you can utilize it and get into that flow state and not have to be, you know, fighting so much. There might also be a message in group two for you. We did kind of touch on that kind of energy as well. Uh, but yes, group three, that is your message. I hope it resonated. Please feel free to let me know below any thoughts, any stories you have about this reading. Um, even a little like on the video, a comment, even emoji would really help the algorithm or the engagement here on my channel. And I greatly appreciate the energy exchange for those of you that take the time to do that. I can't even express to you how grateful I am. And to those of you that have been sending donations, thank you so much. Thanks again so much, Group 3, for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and your donations and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, you guys, bye.